Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Lord, thou shalt open my lips and my mouth shall declare thy praise. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I received several invitations over the course of the last two months to attend the patriarchal uh, banquet in New, in New York. And uh, the invitation was sent repeatedly, not to me personally, it was sent generically to all the priests and everybody, as a matter of fact, in the Archdiocese to, uh, to come to the banquet. Well, needless to say, when we went for the enthronement, the patriarchal enthronement of our new bishop, Archbishop, Metropolitan Joseph, um, the patriarch was there, and uh, obviously it was uh, attended by many, many people. And uh, some went to the banquet on Saturday evening, and some did not, or a good number of people went, and maybe a greater number of people didn't go to the banquet. The reason we didn't go, because it was, it cost $200 per person. And so for my wife and myself, it meant it would, would have been $400 uh, cost for the parish. And I didn't think the parish could afford it. And neither can we afford it, personally. So we didn't go. Not because we didn't want to, but because we couldn't go. There are many, many different kind of banquets. The scripture today tells us about a banquet, a special banquet. And, uh, and I want to talk about three different kinds of banquets. One, that you have to pay to get in, like the one that was in New York. And the second one, now it's very common in this country. In the old country, it's very unknown. We call it potluck uh, banquet. It means you're invited to a place, but you got to bring your own food. And uh, this is a new, a new phenomenon, new phenom phenomena and new type of, uh, uh, of uh, banquet that is really just common in this country. It means you bring your food, you share it with, uh, with the people that uh, show up, and it's, a, it's an event, it's a banquet. Everybody participate, not a person, one person uh, would, uh, would uh, bear the expense, the total expense of inviting everybody else. And then there is the third one, the third one, which is free. You absolutely, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to pay pay price for it. You're invited free to come and attend. And this is the, the kind of invitation that our Lord talks about it. You, we, you and I need to understand Jesus, Jesus our Lord was sitting at the, uh, dining at a table and he was eating when the conversation began and he began to give the parable. People around him were being fed and people, were, he and along with other people were invited into, into a special event. It's one of his followers and he was dining with them. And, and then he began to tell them about the banquet. And he said there was a very, very important man that invited all of his friends all the people to come to his banquet. And, uh, and when the time came, people began to say, uh, uh, his, his servants contacted all the people who were invited, all the invitees, and he told them, and, and they told them that the food is ready, the time has come. And you're welcome to come in because we're ready to serve the meal. And one by one, politely, began to say, thank you, and I'm sorry I can't make it. Everybody came up with really good and strange excuses. One of them said, I just bought a farm. I need to go check it out. What are you doing checking out at the time of the Sabbath. Uh, I came and I went and bought five oxen and I need to check them out. Do you know what? They're all real. They weren't lying. They were telling the truth. And one of them said, I just got married. I got 
to stay home? You know how it is? And they said, please have us excused. Because they didn't want to come. They didn't want to come. Those who are invited to come to God's divine banquet, look around, we're not here. They're not here, not because they don't have the time, because they don't want to be here. They don't want to be here. And, and the Lord was disappointed. And he said, go ahead and invite not just the select, not those in my blacklist or my black uh, tablet. It's not like being bad yet by being black. But in my, in my address book, go invite everyone. Everyone who is, who's wealthy, who's uh, not wealthy, who's poor, who's needy, who's sick. Bring them all in. Invite them all in. And his servants went to the highways and the byways, and they brought everybody they can imagine. They brought the lame, they brought the, the blind, they brought all those with special needs. And they came into the banquet, and the Lord, and the servant came to the Lord, and he said, but the, the banquet hall is not quite full. He said, invite everybody. Don't let anyone go without an invitation. And they did. And the, show, the scripture tells us he, that he came into, into the banquet, into the feast of his son, a wedding feast of his son. And he said, he looked at the, everybody and he saw one person. He said, friend, what are you doing here? Where is your wedding garment? Where is your wedding garment? Typically, when you're invited to party or banquets in in all world culture, you put on the best clothing you have. You dress up fully. Just like someone told me yesterday about going to a gathering. He said, and uh, that person said, I gotta go home. And uh, I said, uh, and what are you gonna do? He said, I gotta really put on the best clothes I have and really shine. That's the way we do it. And that's the way it's done. When you're invited to the king's party, you put on the best you can, the best things you have. It doesn't have to be as good as somebody else, it doesn't, but it, at least it is the best you have. And Jesus looked at the, or the, uh, the king, the one who invited everybody, said, what are you doing here? To the man that did not have his wedding garment, his attire, and he said, he said to his servants, throw him out, throw him out. It, it, it seems odd that the king invites everybody, yet he picks on one person who is not ready. So, but, but what about the rest? The rest were ready. They were dressed. They were prepared to be in the presence of a royal environment. And what are we talking about? What is Jesus talking about here? Why is one doesn't have the right wedding garment? Is it the baptismal garment? Everyone that enters into the party enters with their baptismal garment. All of them have been baptized into the church. The church of God 
is comprised of all kinds of people. The Church of God is comprised of all kinds of people. It doesn't belong to any ethnic group. The Church of God does not belong to any ethnic group. In the Old Testament era, there was the world view at that time. There, the world was divided into two different divisions. You're either a Jew or you're not. If you're a Jew, you're in one category, and if you're not a Jew, you're in another category. And obviously, the preference is for those who are Jews. In the Christian and the New Testament era, there is a different kind of worldview. All are invited. All invited. The church belongs to all of them, to all of us that come from different backgrounds. And the only difference in the New Testament era is one who's prepared and one who's not prepared. Look in the church, who does, who does the work in the church? Not based on their ethnicity. It's based on their gifting. And what kind of gifts God has given us. God has given gifts to all of us to be active in God's church. And to be productive. The difference between some of us and others, some of us have gifts and think we don't have it. Some of us have gifts and says, oh, I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to use it. God invites all of us to be active. There is no such thing as life in the kingdom of God without talents and without gifts. And there is no place that says it's okay just to sit and watch things to happen. 